feel quite basic. It kind of looks cheap. I've seen versions of these on AliExpress. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me or just don't recognize me, uh, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest queen in the box. If you're new here or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Girl, I know you read the title and you're looking at this video and you're like, this video is late. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I have been so busy, but haven't been able to keep up with RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9, so I am finally getting around to doing this finale episode. I was debating if I should or shouldn't do it, but I did the whole series that I felt like I would be disappointing you if I didn't do this video, even if it's late. So, without further ado, it is time to play my favorite game. Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9, episode 12, the grand finale and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. As this is the final episode, the category is a grand finale eleganza, where on the runway, the queens must give us their best drag look. With all-stars queens and their best drag look, we are expecting a perfection. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up is Angeria Paris Van Michaels. And Angeria is coming out wearing this yellow gold dress with all the feathers at the bottom that slowly gradient into a sort of blue teal color. She's then paired it with big blue teal earrings and a beautiful quafted hair. And mama, you can tell that this queen has been to a pageant or two because this is a pageant ball gown like I've never seen before. It's giving me a little bit of like that Belle fantasy, you know, Belle from Beauty and the Beast, but then taking it into this drag world and making it a really luxe and expensive. She's got all of the feathers all over it, which gives you this beautiful texture and makes it look so elegant and rich. Rich. She then paired it with this, uh, these earrings, which I think the earrings are a little bit much for the gown, but the whole gown is a little bit much, and this is drag at the end of the day, so can we really complain? And then she's paired it with this hair, which is just like a beautiful updo, which is subtle enough that it lets the dress shine, but also coiffed enough that it feels like it belongs, because you don't want the hair to overdo the dress, and this hair definitely doesn't overdo the dress, but definitely fits the dress. All in all, this is pretty much perfection and definitely going to be a pub. Next up, we have Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in this black leather dress with all of these buckles all around it. She's got her signature black and white mug with this sort of giant horn hair. She is giving you BDSM a fantasy, but making it fashion. She goes on to explain that this is an homage to Alexander McQueen, and she wanted to play with his aesthetic, but pushing it to the extreme. And honestly, I think it works. I love that Gomic always has these really clear intentions and really clear design aesthetic and a lot of fashion knowledge because then you come up with looks like this. Personally, if I was to ever to do a sort of ball gown, this is the type of ball gown I would love to do. That is, if I can afford it. This dress is uh, both elegant, but also edgy. It's got that punk rock vibe that Gottmik is known for, but it also feels high-end fashion. Sometimes when you go punk rock, it kind of looks cheap, and this definitely does not look cheap. It looks expensive AF. On top of it, she's paired it with this really quafted hair, uh, which she's been doing all season, and here it is yet again. She is really taking this black and white idea and making it her trademark, and she's coming out as the full uh, Dom fantasy version in this one. All in all, this is amazing perfection. Love it, need it, want it, and definitely gonna be a bop. Next up, we have a Georges, and Georges is coming out in this sort of a little red top with this a red a dress with a roses all over it. She's paired it with a big black hair, and immediately I am noticing that she is giving you the Selena fantasy. She's coming down, and this definitely feels like a 2.0 version of Georges. Now, Georges has become known for like these itty bitty costumes, and sometimes they feel quite basic, but here she decided to flip it up and do it in a different way. Yes, you still see a very little fabric, 
bag, yes, you still see a lot of skin, but this one somehow feels a lot more elevated and elegant. And this is just down to the textures and the way that this piece is cut. It's got this little tube top, it's got these gloves, and it's got this dress, and it's got just the right amount of skin to let it all breathe. On top of it, she's paired it with this big hair, and I like George's in big hair. Actually, I like most queens in big hair, but I do like her specifically because she's so small that this big hair really seems like giant on her and exaggerated, and I love that because it gives you more of that drag fantasy as opposed to like the real Womana, which some queens love to do. All in all, I think this is one of George's best look and definitely gonna be a yeah. Next up, we have a plastic tiara, and plastic tiara is coming out in this sort of pink, purple, and white uh, warrior attire. She goes on to explain that this is a traditional Vietnamese warrior based on some sort of opera. Now, I don't know the reference, but honestly, I don't even care because this look is everything. It has everything that you want and then some. Plastic Tiara has a really changed the game when it comes to drag fashion. She has really taken it to a next, next, next level and I don't think any queen in any future edition will ever be able to pair up with her. It is said that she spent $250,000 on her package. That means all of her runways this season and with this look, you can definitely tell. I mean, assuming it's real, but honestly, I believe it. This is very sculptural, but also very flowy. It feels a little bit new age, but also a very traditional. It's it's got lots of pieces to it, so you know that this is like a costume costume. And this definitely costs a few thousand dollars for sure because it's got so many pieces and there's so much work goes into it. From the embroidery to like this sort of 3D printed dress to this headpiece with these giant feathers on it. It's got everything but just in the right amount. Like I said, this is amazing and perfection. And honestly, I feel privileged just looking at it. Imagine owning something like this. This is insane. All in all, this is beyond amazing and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Nina West, and Nina West is coming out in this like dark blue velour dress with this giant ball gown, and she's then paired it with really quaffed blonde hair and these dangling earrings. And mama, this is the best Nina West has ever looked. I love that Nina West went in this direction. I was not expecting this from her because she tends to go a little bit like costumey and a little bit campy, but this is not that. This definitely feels like uh, an elegant dress. Like it feels like the hero of a story, which is what I was expecting from Nina a lot of the time. Sometimes I feel like she came really short, but this time she definitely hit the mark. I do feel a little bit bad for Nina because although this is a very great dress, the people she's competing against this season are just taking it to such a next level that it makes hers feel almost not good enough in some way, but this is good enough. The thing is, is just like the people she's with are just like next level amazing. So it's really hard to compare the two. If I was to change one or two things on this dress, I wish she would have put a necklace on. I think that would have really helped with the like grandeur of it. And I definitely feel like the wig itself could have used some rhinestones in it as well. But other than that, this is pretty great. It is gonna get slightly lower marks just because the competition is tough, but nevertheless, it's still gonna be a oh. Next up, we have Roxy Andrews, and Roxy Andrews is coming out in this gold dress with all of the gold fringe on it. She's then paired it with these sort of gold nail things on her fingers and this gold headpiece. Now, I love Roxy Andrews, and I think Roxy Andrews is an excellent queen, and I was so excited to have her on this season. When it comes to these runways, I do feel like she's not really living up to her name. She is a star in the drag scene, so I think that people, including myself, were expecting big, big things, but she has been overshadowed by a lot of queens. And that's exactly what's happening here with this dress. I do think the dress is very beautiful, but it's definitely missing that extra oomph factor that someone like Gomic or Plastic Tiara have. But I do feel like she could have got there with just a little bit more. Personally, I would have changed the bottom of her dress to be a little bit more frilly, um, kind of like what Gomic did with a little bit more of a train. I think that would have felt a little bit regal and would have given her more of that like mermaid style dress. I would have also liked to see like two two or three times the amount of fringe, uh, maybe at different layers to kind of give you a lot more movement in her arms. Maybe even some of them in a little bit of silver to create a little bit of contrast. I think that would have really helped. When it comes to the nail pieces and the headpiece, 
I have a little bit of problem with these, not because they are bad by any means of the imagination, it's because I've seen versions of these on AliExpress, and because I've seen versions of these on AliExpress, uh, it always makes me think kind of cheap, and I don't know that she necessarily got the fake ones, she might have gotten the real ones, or maybe she did get the fake ones, but the point is, is that once you've seen them so many times, they don't feel original. Now, maybe to a viewer who is not a drag queen, who's not on AliExpress every day trying to look at like different things to buy, uh, this might not be as apparent, but for someone like me, it definitely is. I've definitely thought about buying those nail pieces several times and then just haven't done it uh, for whatever reason. But definitely don't crucify me and hear me out. She definitely looks really, really good. I just wanted more. I'm a greedy bitch. What can I say? All in all, it's still going to be a but. Next up, we have Chanel, and Chanel is coming out in this 1920s inspired gown that is like all soldered together and giving you this sort of like a mesh fantasy. She's coming out with this dog, this cigarette, and this 1920s style wig. She is definitely giving you like that old school, regal, uh, rich bitch uh, fantasy. Now, when this originally came out, I was a little bit surprised and because this is not what I was expecting from Chanel. Chanel is one of those queens that definitely does more is more and that's what we come to love to learn about Chanel. So when she comes out as this is her final look, which is so simple and minimal, it really threw me off. Now, it is a very beautiful gown, but I was confused why this was her finale gown. Well, I did a little bit of research and it turns out that actually her promo look was supposed to be her finale look but she couldn't bring it or something so she had to switch it out for this one at the last minute and that would explain so much because her finale look was so big and so over the top that they screamed Chanel actually it was that promo look that got me so excited to see Chanel on this season and I feel like Chanel didn't always live up to that fantasy now this gown is very beautiful but I think it was not made for uh, this category because it definitely feels like it belongs to a specific uh, prompt or category that they probably didn't use is gonna be my I guess um, because if you don't know drag race sometimes gives the queen extra looks to prepare because they want to keep them on their toes or they want to see what's happening they want to see what people are bringing in order to allow them to change it up and things like that all, all to say is this is a very beautiful dress I just don't know if it's a very beautiful dress for a finale for Chanel that being said it's a lovely dress and I can definitely see it on a lot of people and there's a lot of great craftsmanship put into it and that's why I really can't knock it at all and that's why she's also getting a Bye. Next up, we have Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie is coming out in this like sparkly fringe uh, style uh, jacket in this bright blue color. She then paired it with this uh, leotard underneath in this sort of purpley pink with these uh, giant boots filled with buckles, um, and then she's got flat hair with it. When you zoom in closely, you also see that she's got this little dress underneath, which has got the little Vanjie name all across it that mimics her necklace from her first season. I will say that this look threw me off quite a bit. First up, I didn't see this as a finale eleganza look. I am a firm believer that you do not need to be wearing a dress to be finale eleganza, but I definitely feel like it needs to feel original and elegant. This jacket, I think, although really cool, feels more like a club uh, reveal jacket and not necessarily like a jacket that brings into this finale eleganza. Now, had she done this exact jacket and done it all the way to the floor with a train, then it would have given you a little bit more of that like Missy Elliott vibes and a little bit more of that grandeur, then I think it would have worked. But right now it feels like a little crop toppy, you know what I mean? Um, then we get into the bodysuit underneath and the bodysuit underneath is quite fine I love the boots with all the buckles on them I think that's really cool and really edgy But the boots with the buckles and the jacket don't match So I wish that had she done the buckles Maybe there was more buckles on the jacket or something to coordinate them together on top of that I like things that are a little bit more matchy So I actually would have loved for all of these to maybe did in all blue tones If the jacket was blue then instead of the light purple it could have been a light blue And I think that would have really helped now. I think the best part about this outfit is actually this like little gold chain dress with her name all across it which I think is really genius and really really cool unfortunately it doesn't really read on the runway the only time I really saw it is when they did the close-up of it and that's when I was like oh actually this is pretty cool but before that from far away you kind of miss it so I feel like this dress was maybe not suited for a runway of this size because this is definitely more of an up close and look at the details sort of dress then we get into the 
pieces of hair and maybe it's human hair, but it's flat. I feel like if you're gonna do this look, your hair needs to be like next level. I felt like she should have gone with a lot more sculptural, a lot taller, a lot more edgy, maybe having like a giant Benji in into it or some of the sparkles into it to really like tie this all in together. All in all, this was a little bit of a disappointment for me. I was expecting a bigger things because every queen has been knocking it out of the park. I was expecting Benji to do the same and I just feel she didn't. And that is why I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> And that is it for this episode. And actually, that is it for this season. My God, so much has been going on. What did y'all think about this season? What do y'all think about this runway? Let me know in the comments down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. Now, girl, I will say this whole non-elimination idea, I think was a great idea. I personally was not in love with it. I like that I got to see multiple looks from the queens, but I felt like it was really missing that like competitive edge and that bitchiness, which I love about Drag Race. So I hope they do change the format for next season. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to... Vanessa Vanjie Mateo. It is not a bad look. It's actually a pretty decent look, but it's just not the look I was expecting for a finale. And comparative to everybody else, it was just not my favorite. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week was a little bit tricky because I gave multiple five stars to, but ultimately I decided to go with... Got Mix. I chose Got Mix because although Plastique Tiara was amazing and I think everybody on the internet will say that Plastique should have got the Fab of the Week, I chose Got Mix because not only was it amazing and cool, but also because it's something I would want to own and wear personally. As much as I love Plastiques, I can never see myself wearing it. And this is my show, so my opinion matters the most. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Regardless if you think I am right or wrong, uh, let me know in the comments below. Before we sign off, I want to say a big congratulations to Angie. Congratulations, Angira, for winning the season. I think that she had a lot of high highs in, in this competition, so I completely understand why uh, she won. That being said, I do think that the format really hurt Angira's perception in the audience. Whenever we do this non-elimination, we saw it with Jinx, we saw it with Angira, people got really mad at the winner, even though the winner was pretty well deserved. And that's just because there was too many contenders coming into the finale, so people couldn't like rally behind one person. They were still rallying behind every single queen that they loved the most from day one. And I think that's exactly what happened here. I think Angeria will be an excellent representation for the season. I'm so excited to see what she's gonna do for the next year, but only time will tell. So on that note, that is it for me and uh, this season of Drag Race, but I am launching new videos every week. So please uh, go ahead and go binge watch something else. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.